So hi everyone, welcome to the Dragonfly Deep Dive session. My name is Hai Bin Zhou and I'm from, uh, I'm from eBay <laughs> Infrastructure Engineering Team. Today, I'm going to talk about the Dragonfly, an intelligent P2P image distribution and file distribution solution. Before we go deep in, so in this session we have three parts. One, we are going to go through the why we need image, why we need a specific system for doing image distribution and file distribution. Secondly, I'm going to do an overview of what is Dragonfly, how many components do they have, and how does they work together. And then my partner will give a, a more detailed information, a more detailed introduction on how image pooling works in Dragonfly. And event, and finally we have a demo. So before we go into the detail, let's look at the several cases where image distribution of and file distribution can be a problem. Firstly, let's say you have a lot of machines. The first job you need to do is to install the operating system on all the machines, no matter it's Linux or some different distros. And once the operating system is running, you need to install additional software to run your application. One example of why so one example is JVM. You need to run Java applications. Another example is you have to run containers. You need to install one of the container runtime, no matter it's Docker, D, Docker or it's container D. And then you have your application. So that based on what stack you are using. If you're, if you're writing Java application, you have to distribute your Java archives to all the machines. And if you're running, if you're using Node.js, you have to distribute your Node.js modules, if you some other like Go, you may distribute plugins. Um, that's not the end of the story. You have your application running, and you still sometimes you need to distribute your configurations. And configurations does not have to be small. For example, if you're running a machine learning training job, you have, a, you have to distribute the models file, and if you're running a search engine, you have to distribute the index data to at close as to your application. In that case, the search engine. And the image distribution can be another problem as well. Today, we are all talking about cloud native, but that's not always possible, or at least not fast enough for you to move in from your Lixie application to cloud native application. So you may have to do a simulation where you package all of the, your software you're running services into a fat container. That basically means you are running a container as a VM. And in that case, the image can be very, very large. In the second case, if you have a remote data center, so the, you have your service running in your primary data center, but you also need to distribute some of the images to like an edge if you're running pop. And finally, in Kubernetes, you sometimes have to deploy a demo set. So demo set basically is a Kubernetes concept where you want to run a pod on all of the Kubernetes node. So if, let's say if you have 5,000 5, nodes and you want to create a new, like say the monitoring agent, the secret, security detector, and, you, and that can be very time consuming when you want to quickly deploy it to all of the nodes. So that means definitely we need to improve our current distribution infrastructure. Let's take a look how it is today. Basically, you have several layers. At the bottom is the storage. And then you build a, like a registry service or Maven repository on top of the storage. And then you create a load balancer to expose that as a service. And then the clients talk to the load balancer. So looking at this structure, it's very traditional. It's very simple. But that doesn't solve our scalability problem, as we mentioned in previous two slides. So what you can do, probably not in load balancer, you can configure direct server return. So in that case, the, the data can go from the service to clients directly. And if you can control the service, you can add some redirection. So all of the data does not have to go through the service in order to serve in clients. The data can go from the storage to clients directly. And also, you can enhance the storage. Let's say you can put a secret proxy where you can add multiple cache servers to enhance the read performance. But looking at the 
the four blocks, we are only left the clients. What we can do, what we can do on the clients? So if clients can share the data between them, that comes to the P2P. So that's, the tra that's how the distribution traditionally works. You have a centralized server. Every file goes, to, every client requests the server and gets a copy. But if you can do like this, one of the clients get, one of the clients get its copy and share be between each others. In that case, you don't have the load on the centralized service become much, much decreased. And that's probably a, a solved problem in other area. So like BuildTorrent, it solves how you can distribute media, music. And recently, the IPFS, where you run decentralized web, every, every node is a client and is a server. And obviously, Dragonfly is one of them. It also runs the P2P um, approach. Let's take a look how Dragonfly works in the P2P case. So primary Dragonfly consists of two components. One is the super node, another one is the client. So basically, that's the dfget. During initialization phase, every class needs to register as peer to super node. And suddenly, one of the nodes gets a request, say, I want to download the file. So it sends a request to the super node, hey, I now I want to create tasks to you. And it's basically, what super node does is create a record in its memory and gives you a task ID. In later requests, dfget can use this task ID to pull the status. So the status basically gives you a list of peers where you can, where you can request from different peers to download the file. So the client gets the list and sends the request to its peer. And once downloaded successfully, the clients update to the super node, say, hey, I now I have this node. If you if in your future another client wants to download the same file, you can you can direct them to me. So in addition, in a case where the the class is fresh, no one has the file, the super node can act in as the first step to download from the source and serving as the first peer. So I'm going to talk about each of the components in more detail. First, let's look at Supernode. As we just talked, Supernode is nothing but uh, a bunch of APIs. So it takes, takes the peer registration, takes task creation, and also gives you the pieces information and update, each, update the pieces from on each of the nodes. But what's becoming more interesting is the scheduling part. How does Supernode select a list of peers that is more efficient to you? So there are many possibilities, and there are many chances. We have different algorithms, say, we can, so we can reach to the best utilization. So I, I, I don't have to always request a single peer. That's going to exhaust that, that one. Instead, we can always choose the most, uh, the most the list load the peer which you can request from. And also it can do the seeding. If no one has the file, we can act in as the first one, the super node can act in as the first one to request from source and then serving, serving to different clients. So what is dfget? dfget is pretty much like a wget or cur. It's just simple CLI. But be beyond that, it can also do some funny things like rate limiting. So actually, rate limiting is very important when, when you have some high network intensive application running on that node. You, will, you do not want to consume all of the bandwidth. So by using rate limiting, we can reduce the impact to the running application on that node. And to check some, of course, you don't want to down, download the wrong file, right? And the last one is the seeding. So that's the basic of peer functionality. But looking at that, how can you solve the image dis distribution problem? Docker does not know dfget. Container D does not know dfget. How can you enhance the image pooling performance? And that's with, that part, we need a proxy. So the proxy needs to, uh, so the Docker daemon can talk to the proxy. Proxy can talk to the dfget download file. So and that's exactly what a dfdemon oh, DF is. 
But before we talk to this, let's see how different container runtimes lets you configure the proxy. So for Docker, you have an option to say, you can specify the retracing mirror where you can, when you download some images from Docker Hub, you can specify a, a, a far more close location to you. And for ContentID as well, it can actually support private image mirror where you can config a different mirror for different registries. And all, if you can control the source code of your registry service, you can add in a redirection. Instead of downloading from storage, you can redirect to a proxy. And DF demo is such a proxy which Dragonfly has. Dragonfly is simply as a reverse is a reverse proxy. Actually, in Golang, it's, very, it's pretty convenient. You can re construct a reverse proxy by a single line of code. So in that case, we override the transport. The transport, basically, we, if you can see, it actually invokes the DF get to download the file and then serving the file to the Docker daemon. So next, I will welcome my partner to give a more introduction on how image pooling works in more, much more detail. Thanks. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is, is John Zin, comes from Alibaba Group, uh, one of the members of Dragonfly team. Next, uh, I will analyze how does Dragonfly participate in image, uh, pulling images. Uh, when we introduce Dragonfly, we usually list many features to show how excellent Dragonfly is. Uh, and one of the very important features is non investly support for all kinds of container technologies. Yes, Dragonfly can be in integrated into current container system easily to provide the ability of P2P. Uh, image distribution, and you don't need to uh, change any codes of your container engine. So how did Dragonfly do this? First of all, we have to know what is the image before we understand how does Dragonfly pull it. In short, an image is a com combination of JSON manifest and uh, individual layer. Image manifest describes the uh, various constituents of a dog image. It can be serialized to JSON format. And uh, as we all know, each statement in dog file uh, will be created as an uh, image, Im image layer. Uh, and uh, these layers are stored in the blob portion of the registry created by digest. And pulling a layer is carried out by a standard HTTP request. So the process of pulling an image centers around getting these two components, manifest and layers. So let's see how to get these two components. <coughs> the first step is to get a manifest. Uh, the image manifest can be fetched with the following URL. <coughs> the client sends request with this URL to registry to get the manifest. Uh, here is a is a example. Here is an example, uh, and uh, let's uh, look take a look at the uh, manifest content. There is a very important uh, uh, field of of it, the FS layers or layers in other manifests. Uh, it is a list of layer descriptors, including digest. When the manifest is in hand, the client must verify the signature to ensure the names and the layers are valid. Once confirmed, the client will use the digest to download layers of image. <laughs> Pulling an image is carried out by a standard HTTP request. Uh, it is the same as downloading uh, files from remote HTTP server. The URL is as follows. And the digest is listing the manifest. This is an example of pulling a major layer from a Hubble registry deployed by myself. 
Let's say the example response. The response, the response code is 200. It means that the client can download the layout directly from the registry. To allow for incremental downloads, RAND requests should be supported. It was here. Uh, Dragonfly gets the content length of this layer firstly, calculates the uh, calculates a suitable size, suitable size of pieces. The size of piece is between two MB to and uh, fifteen MB. Uh, and then Dragonfly split the layer files into pieces. Uh, and uh, calculates the byte range to download uh, every piece. At last, uh, Dragonfly downloads uh, every piece content by sending range request to a uh, registry and uh, cache them on local disk. Whenever a piece uh, is downloaded, it can be transferred uh, among the P2P network without waiting for the whole image layer files to be downloaded. Also, the server uh, should support the cache control header, a tag, or modification dates or others. Uh, Dragonfly will use these this, uh, cache control headers to check whether the layer file is expired. If it is expired, Dragonfly will download it again to ensure that the layer data cache in Dragonfly is consistent with the remote server. The, sec the second example is pulling a layer from official re registry. It has two parts, which is much different from the uh, previous one. The first request to re re registry gets a 307 re response code. It tells the client, you should follow the redirect to request another server for pulling the layers. The another service is pointed out by the response header location. And uh, it is a HTTPS, request, a HTTPS server. And the second request is downloading the image layer file from the HTTPS server. From this example, we know that the block portion of the stores, that stores image layers can be another different endpoint from registry. And this is a third example of pulling a layer. It is much similar uh, with the previous one. But the only one difference here is that the location server is the HTTP, it is the HTTP server. So in summary, we learned the whole process of pulling an image. Firstly, we pull the manifest by a HTTP request. Secondly, we pull the layer files by several HTTP requests. So let's see how does Dragonfly pull it. By default, Dragonfly only downloads the individual layer files um, because the layer files are usually larger and pulling them are very time consuming, especially in large scale. Actually, pulling layer files is the uh, same as downloading common files from remote file servers. Of course, we can also configure Dragonfly to download the manifest if we want to speed out in some scenarios. Here is three ways to make docd to pull image layers using Dragonfly. Every way is very easy to achieve. Simply configure docdaemon and restart it. Uh, the host showed here is the component of Dragonfly named dfdaemon we introduced above. First, first way uh, is registry mirrors. When you directly use uh, dog pool image name, dog pool image name, you can use you can use 
there is a restroom mirror, you can set DF daemon or the restroom mirror to pull images. And the second way, HTTP proxy. When the block portion of the registry is an HTTP server, or it's uh, redirected to a HTTP server, you can use DF daemon or the HTTP proxy to pull images, just like dog pool registry host slash image name. Uh, third way, uh, HTTPS proxy. It is very similar to the second way. Uh, when, you, when the block portion is a HTTPS proxy, you can set DF daemon as HTTPS proxy to pull them. Uh, next, uh, we take a look at the whole process of pulling an image by Dragonfly. From this picture, we can see there are three components between doc D and the registry. The components are subnode, uh, DF get, and DF daemon. DF daemon is a proxy between doc D and the registry. Firstly, doc D sends a request to registry. In fact, uh, all requests from DocD go through the node prox proxy, it is uh, DF daemon. Secondly, DF daemon catches uh, all the requests, filter out the pulling layer request, and use DF get to get to pull, uh, to, to pull layers. Thirdly, SuperNode gets the layer downloading task from DF get and uh, checks the local cache if it is not exist or expired, it will download the layer from remote registry and then cache it, cache it on its local disk. Then whenever a piece of the layer is downloaded, <coughs> they, will, uh, they will be transformed in the P2P network. And the subnode uh, will interact uh, with the peers to reply them which has pieces now and which pieces the peer should download. After the peers get pieces met info from subnode, they will download pieces from the other peers. Then pieces are transported among all peers. When all peers and all layers are downloaded, then the image then the whole image pulling is finished. That's the whole process of pulling image by Dragonfly. Here is a demo. Here is a several demo. One demo is show the deployment of Dragonfly, and then the usage of Dragonfly. Let's see. Uh, the first demo is show deploy Dragonfly from dark, dark image. It just uh, uh, you just uh, uh, execute two commands to deploy all the Dragonfly. The first command is to deploy SuperNode. <laughs> this is SuperNode. And the second command is to deploy DF client. It uh, contains DF get and uh, DF, DF daemon. And that's all. The, the second demo is uh, to deploy uh, Dragonfly from source, if you want. It is also uh, very easy. Just to get the code from GitHub and uh, make build. Yes, all right. And then we should uh, start the subnode. Okay, the subnode is uh, start up. And then we should start the DF daemon. Okay, let's let's uh, let's build from the source. Let's say how to download a file by using Dragonfly. Uh, 
this is a this is a beautiful picture. We want to download it uh, on my into my computer. First, we copy the URL. Uh, first, we use curl C U I L to download it and see how much time it cost. Because uh, uh, we just uh, jumped. Okay. Okay, it uh, cost uh, eighteen seconds. Let's see how Deb get to download it. Yes, it just uh, cost uh, three point six seconds. Let's use Deb get to download it again. We can say uh, the the second one is much faster than the first one, uh, because because that uh, the first one is a peer that has downloaded it, and Subnode know that. So Subnode uh, uh, tells the second dev get, you download the same file uh, from the first dev get. Because they are in the same machine, so the second one download from the third, uh, first dev get, so it is much faster than the first one. Okay, let's say how to use DF daemon to download these files. We just, uh, we just uh, to use HTTPS proxy and uh, use curl to download it. We can say it just cost 1.2 seconds. Yes, it, it will make your CUIL has the ability of PDP downloading. Let's see how to pull image by registry mirror. Firstly, we 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 pull the index from without a dragonfly. It is very slow. We Jump to the result. Okay, it almost spent uh, one minute to download the index. So let's say how. So let's say you strong fly to uh, pull the same image. First, uh, we should. Configure the register mirror, set the DF daemon as a register mirror, and start DF daemon. And remove the image. Okay, let's put the same image. We can say this just cost six seconds, and every layer cost less than one second. It is much faster than uh, the first first push pulling. Oh. Let's say how to pull image by HTTP proxy and HTTP pro. HTTPS proxy. Uh, this is pulling the image without drunk fly. It is very, very slow. And the image, the image is uh, 400, uh, 441 MB size. Let's just uh, jump to the end. OK. It's uh, cost uh, six minutes. Let's use drunk fly to pull the same image. 
we should config the HTTP proxy and uh, HTTPS proxy and uh, restart it. Okay, let's pull the same image by Dragonfly. We can see it is much faster than the previous one. Uh, it is almost download, and uh, now it is uh, extracting. And the whole cost is uh, 23 seconds, and every layer cost uh, just uh, th two seconds. That's all the demos. Uh, this is our roadmap, and we have a lot of things to do in the future. So it is very welcomed if you have interest to hack on drunk fly. That's all. <laughs> is there any questions? Thank you. Um, with this DF daemon, you have uh, mirrors f from your super nodes every time, so it will have a lot of overhead or not. You got me? Yeah, the DF daemon. <laughs> Someone got me? <laughs> okay. The DF daemon is a mirror of your super node, uh, so as, uh, as I understood it. Uh, it's a proxy, the DF daemon. Uh, okay, then the DF get. Uh, so where's the data stored on the node? So you um, created a, um, yeah, a mirror on the local host or not? Or it's, is it only proxying up to, um, to the super node or to DF get? To DF get. The Docker daemon, yeah, okay, okay, okay. The data is stored where then actually? Uh, on every host then, where you have it installed, the daemon at the end, yeah? Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Well, for me, it's kind of overhead. At least you have then uh, data replicated on every host, right? Okay, okay. Just for my understanding, it's okay. <laughs> But actually, it can do some auto cleanup. You don't you don't really take the disk this space in the long run. That's a great question. So that's all. Thank you.